praise the Lord today. Hallelujah, saints. You know, our God's a true and living God, and He never leaves us without understanding about many things. And, you know, the Word of God, the Holy Bible, is so full of life and principles and examples and things that we can look at and, and we can say, we go, wow, man, that's me. Lord, help me, you know, and help me not to do that, or Lord, help me to do that, you know, and we want to be obedient to the Lord in our walk in the narrow way, and and so it's good to read the scripture, it's good to get into the word and learn from the examples of the brothers, the sisters that went before us, the great cloud of witnesses, hallelujah, and in Genesis chapter 12, we have a story here, 12, 13, 12 and 13, of Abram now let's pray father I thank you for this word and I bless you so much Lord for your holy word the revelation contained therein how you showed me this this morning Lord you let me just see something here and I just want to communicate it to your people father for their benefit for Sharon's benefit for my benefit for all of us Lord hallelujah we are all your people we are all your children Lord today those of us who have surrendered to you and Lay down our lives, Lord, and say, Lord, now take us up and use us. And Father, I pray that you will just so invigorate us with your holy love today that we make the adjustments necessary anywhere in our life, Lord, where we can be just absolutely consumed with you and put Satan under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, chapter 12 of Genesis. This is the beginning of the story of Abram. Now he's mentioned here in chapter 11, but we're going to go right here to chapter 12. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram. Now this chapter 12, verse 7. Okay, 12 is the number for government. Seven is the number for perfection. Now, now, when Martin Luther or whoever it was that put the numbers, the verse numbers, for easy reference in the scripture, you know, God was guiding that because, like I said, 12 is the number for government. Seven is the number for perfection. You know, it's the Lord's number. Hallelujah. And the Lord appeared unto Abram. That's just a side note now and said unto thy seed will I give this land now you know in the good King James Bible there's two dots after land it's like God just said this to him and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto thy seed will I give this land will I give this land there's there's just about 5,000 things right there or 20,000 in unto thy seed will I give this land Okay. Look in the spirit now. Look in the spirit. And there. There's two dots. And then it says. And there. Builded he. An altar. Unto. The Lord. Who appeared. Unto him. Wow. That's powerful. See the altar is speaking of the cross now. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Now verse 8. 
Now, 8 is the number of new beginnings. It's the number of completion. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Now that's powerful. You see two altars here. Abraham, he, he came into the land. He passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was in the land. And then the Lord appeared to Abram. And there he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Okay. And he removed from thence. Evidently the Lord had, had him moved from thence. He felt something in his spirit. He needed to move from where he was. Okay unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east and there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord that's powerful now like again like I said the altar speaks of the cross now Abraham is just in the land now he's 75 years old and God has called him to walk and listen to him and do what he says okay Abram is the father of all the faithful. Hallelujah. And Abram journey going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. He went down into Egypt, saints. To sojourn there and the word sojourn this is what really hit me because I looked this up and it just hit me so much it I just have to share this with you I mean, I, God wants us to see this because this is what's happening right now we see it happening to sojourn there okay he went down to Egypt he went down into Egypt to sojourn there that word sojourn is to turn aside from the road okay to turn aside from the road now many today in the faith who profess the name of Jesus many of you you have turned aside from the road from the narrow way and you've done it because of this look he turned aside from the road sojourn to shrink fear as in a strange place okay abide a symbol be afraid dwell fear see he was a stranger because he had walked away from the land of Canaan where God brought him he went down into Egypt it brought fear into his life many today are in fear about the circumstances the things going on in the world and all the stuff that's happening in this world and it's because you're off the narrow road. When you're on the narrow way, you're looking at the Lord. You're focused on the Lord. You're offering yourself a living sacrifice daily unto Him. Which is our reasonable service. This is what we do. And we walk with Him. This this altar, see, Abraham built an altar. And every day Abraham would offer sacrifices unto his God. See? He was waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord, doing what the Lord told him to do. But when the famine came, he, he skedaddled down to Egypt to find bread instead of calling upon his God. Now God allowed this to happen as an example to us. And he speaks of that in Isaiah, talking about his children going to Egypt for help. How is it that God's people think that they can run down to Egypt run to something other than God something from the world for help in a time of need and then when they're down there in Egypt and they're all bottled in with fear and they're all bottled in with everything they call upon God God's going to create the circumstances to bring his people out of Egypt to bring his people out of Egypt. And when God does that, make sure you get skedaddling out of Egypt 
right now I mean today is the day when you hear this God says come out of Egypt come out of that way of thinking take up your cross follow me listen it says look what happened when Abram went down to Egypt okay to sojourn there that word means fear he was afraid okay to turn out of the way for the famine was grievous in the land verse 11 12 11 of Genesis and it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai his wife behold now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee that they shall say this is his wife they will kill me but they will save thee alive say I pray thee that thou art my sister that it may be well with me for thy sake that my soul shall live because of thee and it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair the princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house and he <clears throat> and he entreated Abram well for her sake and he had sheep and oxen and asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels and the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai Abram's wife and Pharaoh called Abram and said <clears throat> what is this that thou hast done unto me why didst thou not tell me that she was thy sister that the that she was thy wife and why saidest thou she is my sister so I might have taken her to me to wife now therefore behold thy wife take her and go thy way and Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had now right here you can see God entered in because of Abraham's turning out of the way God came down and entered in and caused this plague to happen to Pharaoh God's gonna step in right now I'm telling you right now God's gonna create circumstances just like I said for you for many of you to give you a cause to to bring you out of Egypt okay and obey the Lord and come out of Egypt turn around and come out of Egypt and what I mean by that what the Lord means by that that principle that you think Egypt's gonna save you that principle that you think that that all the things of Egypt are going to be a comfort to you and help you in this end time hour and they're not going to help you okay and they're not going to save you if you think that hallelujah now listen he came out now notice from verse 11 to verse 20 you do not see when Abraham is in Egypt he's, he doesn't build an altar he doesn't build an altar in Egypt he's not taking up his cross daily and following the Lord in Egypt no no he, he's in fear he's in fear see chapter 13 and Abram went up out of Egypt he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him into, into the south and Abram was very rich in cattle in silver and in gold and he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai unto the place of the altar hallelujah see unto the place of the altar which he had made there at first and there Abram called on the name of the Lord see it's at the altar that he called on the name of the Lord it's at the cross see when we come to the cross daily that's where Jesus said you got to take up your cross daily because Jesus walked that life he walked the crucified life he said if the father sent me so send I you now this is something Christians they don't want to embrace that right now most Christians don't want to embrace that they don't want they don't want to embrace the crucified life they want to have fun while Egypt's going on strong and Babylon's working good they, they want to have fun enjoy Disneyland but see the Lord loves you so much he's going to bring a cause to you to help you to cause you to embrace the cross because he loves you that much he's chosen you many of you and lot also that's awesome I gotta read verse 4 again because when he came out of Egypt he came out of Egypt okay unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first and there Abram called in the name of the Lord. The Lord's telling many today, he's telling you, go back to your first love. 
get back to your first love. The seven churches mentioned in Revelation, you know, begins with Ephesus. They have left their first love. And every church there, there's something in every denomination, in every uh, sphere, if you will, of the Christians' lives where there's something from every one of those seven churches going on in one way or another in principle. And God says, get back to your first love and that'll take care of all the rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get back to your first love, the cross. See, that's where you were saved if you're saved and born again at the cross. Not in your reason, not up here, but at the cross, that principle of the cross, the dying, the dying, knowing that you're dead with Christ. Hallelujah. Buried with him in baptism and then risen to newness of life. See, each day walking in resurrection power because we deny ourselves. Hallelujah. Praise God. He called on the name of the Lord when he went back to the cross, when he went back to the altar. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the lamb was not able to bear them that they might dwell together, for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray from me, I pray thee from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, I will go to the right. And if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Look at the humility of Abraham. He just lets Lot choose. See, Abraham, he's back at the altar now. He remembers he's back. He's got the cross. He's just going to trust God. He says, Lot, do whatever you want. See, and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. that would, And it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, the easy way, the plain of Jordan. Ain't no rocks and had to go through boulders and everything. Chose the easy way, the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east. And they separated themselves, the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. Many today have their tents even pitched towards Sodom. But when the men of Sodom, but but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, verse 14. This is Genesis 13:14. The Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, after that Lot was separated from him. Lot, that one that wanted the easy way. Mm. Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Verse 18, last verse of the chapter here. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the, in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is so powerful. Two times the altar is mentioned in chapter 13. Two times in chapter 14. I mean chapter 12. Okay, 2 and 12 and 2 and 13. And right in the middle there's this fear gripping Abraham. He doesn't build an altar. There's this Egypt in Abraham. It's in him, see. It's this fear in him. And, and sometimes the Lord allows things in our lives to reveal to us this fear to reveal to us that there's this fear principle in the flesh that he wants to die and the only place it's going to die is at the cross okay your money will not get rid of it your gold your silver your precious stones your food storages nothing will get rid of that fear except the cross 
So you must build an altar today. Build an altar today. Get on your face before God and say, God, I'm sorry for thinking that I could do it myself. And when you do, God's going to meet you. And He's going to help you and teach you how to take up your cross daily and follow Him because your very life depends upon it. There is not going to be any safety outside of Christ. And anyone who's outside of Christ is going to be absolutely destroyed off the face of the earth in what's coming. The Lord's going to take care of it. The Lord's going to take care of it. I'm telling you right now, Jesus is going to, His broom is in His hand. See, He's going to sweep the earth. And everything that's not of Christ is going to be done away. It's going to be shaken down to the very foundation. And so today God says, examine your heart and see. Because see, God loves you. He loves his people. He loves mankind. He wants mankind to turn to him. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But he knows that all will not come. Because there are those who are of the devil. Jesus said so, Matthew 13. But still, God's heart is full of compassion. And He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But men choose to go there. And so God says, well then, have your way. See? But the altar is there today. It's the cross. Come to the cross today. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for this word. Bless people's hearts to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen.